Hi, and welcome back to Morgana's Monday demonstration. Today, um, she's painting another one in our, our series of Yuletide cards or Christmas cards. And I hope you'll really enjoy watching her paint these four simple beginners um, cards in watercolour. And hopefully they will inspire you to paint something similar. Hello there, everybody, and welcome. It's Morgana here today. Uh, and this week's Monday video is a series of simple, uh, beginner-friendly Christmas cards. I'm starting today with a uh, large piece of watercolour paper, uh, 11 by 15 inches, and I've divided it into four quarters using some washi tape, uh, just to give us four little sections in which to uh, demonstrate for you four simple Christmas card designs. Uh, I've taped the paper to my board with masking tape and my board is at a slight angle, so roughly uh, 30 degrees. And I've used a Pebeo drawing gum uh, to mask out some of the simple shapes uh, on these quarters. You can see just three shapes along the bottom uh, have been masked out. That's just going to protect them uh, while I paint in the background. So I'm beginning today by washing this uh, top left quarter with clean water to do some wet and wet uh, work. The colours I'll be using are on screen today. Um, I'll pop a full list in the video description for those who are interested. Uh, and I'll be doing this for each quarter of the painting, but I, I won't be showing it every time, but just showing it for you here. So this is to get the uh, paper nice and wet and ready to do uh, a really pretty, uh, simple, wet and wet background. So for this painting, I decided to uh, use some really lovely, simple, neutral colours. So uh, these colours are mixed using a little bit of ultramarine with some raw umber mixed with plenty of water on my palette. And you can see I'm just uh, really simply putting them in uh, using horizontal and vertical strokes just to get a nice, soft, uh, neutral, wintry grey because this is going to be, I think, the perfect backdrop for these delicate little seed heads. And you can see the paper is really nice and wet so I'm able to move the paint around uh, really easily and uh, I'm using the side edge of the brush to get some interesting shapes uh, with some soft colour that's just going to uh, diffuse and soften with the water that's already on the paper but still leave the shadow, the impression of those sharper brush strokes. This gives us a really nice soft background on which to uh, to do some foliage. And here you can see I've just added in a little extra green just for a touch of colour. This is Hooker's Green with plenty of water again, uh, just blended in really nicely and simply. Now you don't need to go too mad or too dark or too detailed with this sort of background. Um, I think it's quite uh, beginner friendly. It's quite a simple but classic watercolour technique, a little bit of wet and wet, uh, never goes wrong. <laughs> And now on top of this, I'm using uh, my um, flat wash brush again. Um, I'm wiping it between every stroke because I want it uh, only damp and clean. And you can see I'm actually using the bristles to pull a little paint out of the paper and create these paler marks. So you can do this with a clean, damp brush, uh, a thirsty brush, as they call it. And it just sucks up some of the water and paint and leaves you with some clean space there. So for me, I'm happy with that first background. I'm moving on to the second. Whilst that one dries, I'm using cerulean blue to just put in a nice, clear, bright winter sky. As I said, I've already got a little bit of water on this paper, which uh, I'm sure you can see there. And I've just taken it down to this pencil line here where I've drawn out a little snowy hill. And so I'm just pulling the colour across. Basically what we're doing here is a really simple graduated wash. We want a stronger blue at the top of the paper, at the top of the sky, and just fading down to a little more misty the closer it gets to the ground. 
and as you can see I'm just strengthening the colour here blending in a little bit of extra cerulean along the top and just graduating it down and we get this lovely uh, pale coloured wash of course you could use any blue for this perhaps a cobalt blue would uh, look really really pretty as well for a bright winter sky uh, but now that wash is done, uh, nice and speedy, <laughs> now moving on to the third one. This is going to be a moonlit scene and as you can see I'm using darker colours for this. So this is a blend of ultramarine blue and Payne's grey. I think they both work really nicely to give a lovely sort of midnight hue. I think ultramarine on its own is a little too bright and Payne's grey alone is a little too dark so uh, I think they are good friends in this <laughs> in this particular situation. And again you can see I have put a little bit of clear water on the paper first bringing it only down to where I've painted in uh, sorry where I've penciled in <laughs> that uh, sloping snowy hill and so I'm just bringing the colour down that far trying to maintain a really nice smooth line and a really nice smooth uh, simple wash of colour here. You can see as well where that masking fluid is helping us out by keeping that little circular full moon covered whilst I paint in these darts and our little fox silhouette as well. So uh, once the paper the paint is all dry I'll be able to remove that uh, and get some lovely white paper to uh, paint on again. So now I'm really happy with that uh, lovely midnight dark wash, lovely and simple. I'm now moving on to the, uh, the last one and I'm using some raw sienna here today. Uh, I think raw sienna works really well to give sort of a subtle sunshine hue where you don't want too much of a bright yellow gold but you still want that glow. Uh, so as you can see we're doing a little glow of sunshine and I've got my circle of diluted raw sienna uh, which I'm now surrounding with another sort of pale neutral tone very similar to the colour that I used in the, uh, the first quarter of this paper. So it's a mix of raw umber and a little bit of ultramarine to just neutralise that colour and you can see it gives us this lovely soft grey and I'm working wet in wet again so I put uh, water on this bit of paper to begin with before adding in the sun glow uh, and now as you can see uh, the darker colour that I've put in is uh, diffusing and softening and we're still getting that lovely uh, sunny glow uh, behind the, uh, the darker neutral tone that I'm putting in now. I'm just using a, a mop brush for this, a size 10 mop, uh, lovely for all sorts of work, a very versatile brush for both blending and as you can see I'm just putting in these soft uh, lines that are going to diffuse really prettily because we're working wet and wet uh, and that's just give another sort of backdrop for this particular um, quarter which is going to be a songbird on a little bed of reeds singing his little heart out. So now all the backdrops are dry and I'm beginning to add some detail. Starting again with this top left quarter, I'm uh, following the pencil line that I drew earlier which is still showing roughly through the uh, pale wash that I put on. Uh, and I'm just following the pencil lines and I'm going to paint in these uh, little delicate wintry seed heads. So I'm just going slowly and just trying to get really nice smooth lines. Um, I'm using a uh, small liner brush for this. This is um, a synthetic brush from Da Vinci, um, one of their Colineo uh, range. It's a size zero, so it comes to a lovely thin point, but it also carries a nice amount of uh, paint as well so you can get these nice long lines without having to uh, take a break to dip back in and uh, gather more paint and more water. 
The colour I'm using here again is a neutral mix uh, with raw umber and ultramarine but with um, a lot less water so it's not very dilute and you can see the strength of the colour is uh, really nice. It's standing out against the pale background but it's also harmonising because again it's the same colours that I've used to mix it up so we get similar tones and we get that lovely colour harmony. And I think these are some of the simplest uh, sort of seed heads to do. I think they look effective and uh, very, very pretty. Uh, I think they're quite beginner friendly because once you actually watch and just follow the lines, they really aren't that difficult at all. You just need a, a fine brush and a steady hand. So now I've put in these sort of little sweeping semicircular strands of these seeds. All that remains to be done is just to put uh, a little seed on the end of each one and paint some careful little spikes um, <laughs> on little wispy bits coming off of each uh, little end tip of uh, this dried up seed head or flower head. And I think this just gives a really sort of pretty natural wispy appearance quite whimsical sort of thing you want for a, a seasonal card that isn't sort of too Christmassy and in your face you know I think this is a slight alternative to perhaps the classic sort of snow scene or robin Christmas card uh, that I think is just really pretty and uh, certainly puts a smile on my face and uh, I hope it does for you as well. So you can see I'm using exactly the same technique with this second uh, little desiccated flower head to fill in using the liner brush. I'm just going to finish this one up and then go ahead and uh, add another one on the left side. Um, I'll skip ahead a little bit in the video just because uh, this has already turned into a bit of a long one. Uh, and I'm using exactly the same techniques as I've just demonstrated to so just add this third little desiccated flower here on the uh, on the right. So those are really my sort of main structure of this uh, little Christmas card painting. So now those main elements are in place. I'm actually just going to go ahead with my liner brush and add in some little delicate grasses and seeds uh, sort of quite spontaneously uh, just sort of do what looks right and just fill in those little gaps but make sure to leave plenty of the uh, that really pretty wash showing through that we uh, took the trouble to do those little white spaces in between the uh, washy background I think looks really pretty so I'm just going to go in and ha add a couple of extra simple seed heads, just a few lines and a few dots to just fill the space a little more uh, and just uh, to finish off the composition really, just to fill in that little blank space and make this section look complete. And of course you can do as many of these or as few as you like. Uh, if you prefer an emptier composition then of course by all means um, skip this step. <laughs> or uh, if you prefer different sort of grasses or seeds perhaps you've got a photograph that you really love and that you'd like to copy some of the plants from it then by all means go ahead and do that but now I'm just going to go ahead and carry on painting some 
sort of little lines and little seed heads and I'm going to move from this one onto the left hand side but again I'm going to hop ahead a little bit in the video so you don't have to sit here and watch me drawing grass for the next 20 minutes. And there we go, you can see I've just filled in with some simple little lines and dots, a few extra grasses. Uh, I'm really pleased with how that looks, I think it looks very pretty. Um, by all means pause the video here and uh, take a screenshot or a, a close look at the shapes that I've used, but they're really very simple and I hope uh, eminently um, traceable or copyable. <laughs> so now I'm moving on to the second part, the second uh, quarter. And uh, this is going to have some lovely simple fir trees, uh, some lovely Christmassy trees. Uh, and again, nice and simple, you just draw one long vertical line with your fine brush. And now you can see with a little brush, I'm just using sort of really uh, light and loose strokes, starting at the top and broadening out towards the bottom. And it gives you this lovely sort of natural looking fir tree. And I'm going to repeat the process again for another tree, this time um, a taller fellow, just so that you can see again. Starting at the top and working my way down with some uh, really simple sort of short, light, loose uh, strokes of the brush. Make sure your brush has uh, plenty of paint uh, in it, nice, um, nice loose paint uh, which goes on really freely. I'm using uh, some Hooker's Green for this, uh, this particular part of the Christmas card. I think it's a really vibrant, really lovely green and uh, it certainly seems to hold its own against the cerulean blue as well. But by all means, if you've got a favorite green or a different green or if you prefer to mix your own, then uh, please do go right ahead. So I'm just going to keep working my way down to the base of the tree and just thicken up that uh, trunk a little bit. Um, I'm then going to just add in one more tree, which again I'll, uh, I'll skip ahead for because uh, you've already seen it twice. <laughs> and at this point you can feel free to add some more trees if you like. Um, I start with three because I think it looks lovely and clean and simple, but by all means paint in a, a lovely little forest uh, if that's something that makes you smile. But now all I'm doing is just uh, adding a little bit of shadow at the base of the trees to just sort of root them in the landscape, just give the impression of perhaps some roots sort of bulging up and down into the earth through the snow, uh, just making them look like they are actually growing out of this snowy hill rather than just sort of simply plonked on top of the landscape. So I'm going to leave those to dry and move on to Christmas card number three. I'm really pleased with the background for this one. You'll notice I do have a couple of splotches where I was perhaps over vigorous with the water uh, <laughs> and they've uh, created a couple of little pale marks onto this uh, nice dark moonlit background, but that's really okay. Uh, mistakes happen and it's silly to pretend that they don't. And uh, I'm actually going to incorporate those as a little glow for, from uh, some stars uh, when I come to finish off this background. So I'm really not too worried about that. But all I'm doing now is uh, filling in another tree. This is uh, not a fir tree. This is a, a, a stumpy little deciduous tree of some sort that has lost its leaves uh, during the winter. So I'm just painting in some lovely strong and striking sort of bare branches that are going to be uh, hanging over the silhouette of the small fox that we've got sitting on top of the hill here. And to paint this in, uh, I'm using a little bit of lamp black mixed with a touch 
of raw umber so uh, that sort of softens the black a little bit means that it's not too sort of heavily black black um, <laughs> if you know what I mean I think the raw amber adds a little bit of extra hint of color here and prevents it from being too stark uh, but really I'm using my small brush again and just trying to keep it quite loose and light and adding in these little spontaneous branches. Um, I really want to get them sort of flowing over the shape of the fox that I've dropped uh, masked out underneath. So I'm just pulling the branches sort of up and to the right, uh, trying to be quite spontaneous and just uh, let go in with the flow, so to speak. <laughs> Now just adding a little bit of extra darkness at the base of the tree to just root it into the landscape uh, in a similar way that I did with our fir trees. And now I'm happy with the uh, the shape of that lovely old tree. Uh, I'm moving on to the fourth card again. And uh, this is just going to be nice and simple. Just these long, uh, elegant lines of some reeds and grasses. Because uh, of course we've got a little bird that's going to be sitting on top of one of these reeds. Singing away into the morning sunrise. So I'm putting on the first layer of reeds. You'll be able to see, I'm sure, that the paint is uh, really very watery and um, quite light here because this is going to be the first layer, sort of background layer, so to speak. I'm going to layer up once this is dry. But, so that's why I'm keeping it very pale because with the uh, extra water that I've added, this is hopefully going to dry even paler than you can see it here um, and also slightly translucent. So it should be great as a background that I can just paint um, a few extra reeds on top of. And uh, for this colour, I believe it's the, um, again, Hooker's Green, lovely green mixed with a touch of raw umber and a little burnt sienna as well. Sorry, raw sienna as well. So I've now left that to dry for a little bit uh, and I'm ready to come back and uh, just add a few more finishing touches. So for this uh, first Christmas car, the top left, I'm adding a little bit of festive snow using some white gouache. This is uh, an opaque paint which as you can see I'm able to just dab on over these little seed heads and just give them a lovely little light dusting of snow. Uh, this is of course entirely optional uh, if you'd rather keep them plain but for me <laughs> this just makes me smile uh, and I love doing it. I love the effect that it gives. You really don't need to be too delicate here just um, just pile on that little uh, little heaping of snow on top of each little seed head. <laughs> I think it just gives a really pretty uh, wintry effect. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing on all of these uh, little seeds and I'm just sort of doing it from the top downwards so uh, on any of the points that are um, pointed upwards towards the sky where the snow would naturally fall rather than painting it um, along every single line and every single uh, sort of section. And you can always uh, begin by just adding a little bit uh, and then if you like the effect you can go back in uh, and add a little more. 
So the nice, th nice thing about this uh, white douache is that it layers up quite prettily. And this is something uh, I decided to take advantage of. Um, I've just put in this first layer, which I'm showing you now, and um, I did decide to go back in after I <laughs> switched the camera off uh, and add a little more snow. Uh, as you can see, just a little bit more white on the top of those wee seeds. Uh, and I think they look really, really pretty and delicate. So while that's drying, I've moved on to the uh, card number two, just adding some shadows in from these lovely trees. Really, really simply, all you need is some more cerulean blue, quite heavily watered down. You can see it's quite pale. And just use some really loose, um, sort of scraggly horizontal brush strokes to pull the shadow down from the base of the trees and uh, run it a little raggedly across that bit of snow there. And there we are, it's as simple as that, lovely little snow shadows. So whilst I'm waiting for that to dry, <laughs> going to add in another little touch. Um, I thought a little series of uh, wandering footprints would look pretty on the side of this snowy hill here. So again, I'm starting with blue and just doing uh, just little uh, tiny delicate dots in a trail, sort of one after the other, the way your footsteps would naturally fall. And once you've got them in, just use a little extra dark. I'm using um, some Payne's Grey here uh, to just go over uh, just the edge of those uh, little pale marks just to uh, deepen them and add the impression of a shadow because, of course, they are marks in the snow, not on the snow. So I need a little bit of shading there. So now I'm removing the masking fluid. You can see if you just gently rub with a fingertip, it comes off really cleanly. So that's our full moon already there. Don't need to do anything more to that. It's got a lovely glow. I'm really pleased with how the masking fluid has worked. Uh, so now all I need to do is fill in the shape of this uh, little fox friend we've got sitting beneath the tree. I'm using burnt sienna, which I think is a lovely uh, sort of rusty orange reddish color. Uh, just to fill in the general shape using a small brush. Uh, and if you've got your outline properly uh, penciled and masked out, then really all you need to do is just fill in the shape. You can see I'm just going around the outline with my burnt sienna. Um, I'm leaving a tiny little patch of white just uh, on the chest. Um, I hope you can see there. And I'm leaving also a tiny line of white showing through just between the uh, body of the fox and where the tail curls around. Uh, this is just to show the shape of the tail uh, curling sort of around and under the uh, the fox where he's sitting. Um, otherwise, uh, I feel like it might just look a little bit just like a um, an extra sort of weird blobby shape. <laughs> so a little line of uh, just to differentiate the tail from the rest of the fox, which I'll show you uh, in just a moment. And just for anybody who's curious, for this uh, fine detail work, I'm using a brush from Pro Art, the Master Strokes Series 60s range. Uh, I have a set, I think, of uh, five brushes. They're a little miniature pack. Uh, this is a size 4 slash 0. They range in size from a size 0 to a size 10 slash 0, so they're really, really fine uh, and versatile as well. They work with uh, a lot of different paints, so they're and not too dear as well. <laughs> uh, but now I'm moving on to the uh, final one of our Christmas card extravaganza here today. <laughs> and you can see I'm adding in the second layer of reeds, just filling in uh, across these shapes. I'm using my sword liner brush and some darker paint this time to just go over the shapes a little bit and just add some darkness in a nice little bit of contrast. So we've got lots of light, we just need a little bit of shadow. 
and the sword liner brush is great for this you can see by pressing it against the paper you can create some really interesting little shapes but if you don't have a sword liner then um, any sort of fine brush or rigger brush something like that uh, would work equally as well here I'm just trying to keep the lines really fine um, and of course we need to make sure to put in the reed the actual one that the bird is sitting on so I'm just bringing that dart line up uh, and curving it round just to make sure we give our songbird his perch before going back to just fill in a little bit of extra detail all around and while I'm waiting for those to dry I'm just moving on to uh, this top one here and adding a finishing touch of just a little scattering of birds who've perhaps been startled up from those fir trees by whoever has just uh, walked across and left those footprints. And I'm using uh, some more of the opaque white gouache here uh, and a small brush to add a scattering of stars across this moonlit sky. Again, this is a lovely, uh, simple way to uh, make this particular little little card uh, stand out and again look sort of pretty and Christmassy. All you need is the uh, opaque white paint um, and a small brush and a steady hand again. And just dot in some stars try not to uh, make them look too regular make them look a little quite natural and sort of uh, randomly placed don't forget to put some sort of peeking through the branches of the tree as well and this is why i wasn't too upset when that sort of splosh of water got onto this darker background and made those couple of little little pale blooms there which was really uh, against a stifle of stars who's going to notice and now to make these stars even more Christmassy I'm just going to add a finishing touch again with uh, my fine brush and you just pull a little bit of sparkle out of those stars just a simple pull four lines basically a cross through the uh, little dot that you've made again using the white gouache and it just gives those stars a little bit of a twinkle just showing you on these three here I'm going to add in a couple more off camera and I think it gives a really pretty effect and while I'm here as well with my fine brush I'm just adding a little black tip to our fox's nose the tips of his ears and on his tail uh, you could also use um, if you've got a black fine liner that would work really well for this as well uh, if you don't have too fine a brush but now for the uh, last step in this uh, final card which is painting in our little songbird so you can see I've rubbed off the masking fluid again you can just use your fingertip for such a small amount uh, and I'm just filling in the simple shape trying to keep it really simple um, I'm using some raw umber here on the wing uh, and just going to bring that up across onto the uh, little head and I'm going to use a bit of burnt sienna which is the same color I used for the fox uh, to give him a little splash of red and I'm going to turn him into a robin a uh, classic sort of European robin which for us here in the UK is uh, one of the uh, traditional symbols of Christmas but of course uh, if you have a favourite bird you could always use a different colour palette uh, I think he would look very fine all in red as a cardinal perhaps and just do a slightly different shape or uh, any one of your favourite songbirds. This is uh, perhaps the joy of this sort of Christmas card is that you can customise it to whatever you want and uh, whatever makes you smile really.
so there we are just finished off that little songbird lovely and simple again all you need is a steady hand to just fill in that shape and now i'm just adding a small spattering of the opaque white gouache over this top left corner just for an added sprinkling of snow And that's really easily done, just use a fan brush dipped in some white gouache that you've mixed with a bit of water to loosen it. And then just hold it quite low and tap it on the handle of a second brush just to get those little dainty spatters to look quite nice and bright and spontaneous. And for me, that is my Christmas cards done. <laughs> Four of them at least for this year. So I'm just uh, peeling back the washi tape that I've used to divide up these sections. Uh, you can see it comes off really nicely and cleanly. Um, I've used the washi tape instead of regular masking tape to divide the paper just because it's a bit thinner, so it's given me more space to paint. And there we are, these are the finished cards. Thank you everybody so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the video and as well as uh, perhaps getting some inspiration and ideas for your own festive Christmas cards uh, this year. I'd love to uh, know what you think if you leave me a comment below the video. Uh, a huge thank you again to Lois Davidson for her kind generosity in inviting me to come and share these videos with you. Uh, I'll be making a regular <laughs> appearance every Monday, uh, so I look forward to seeing you all again really soon in the next one. And in the meantime, happy painting all. <laughs>